Hi, I'm Buddy. Welcome back to the channel. Today, let's talk about doing drip irrigation with the spray nozzle emitters and poly tube for a long lasting life. So if you think like my family and I, you get through about July and into August and you're like, I don't really want to go out and water, but you really need to water because those are the more critical times. Well, one of the big problems is you don't want to use PVC because it's going to break down really fast. And that's where poly tube really comes in handy because it is built to be out and kind of exposed. The other thing you might want to use is drip hose. Now, these both have their place and they both do their thing. And today I wanna to go over doing polytube with different emitters. First thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna to want to break out your garden areas into different zones. And the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is figure out what you wanna do where. In our case, I've already started by doing some experimentation and doing a hose, a drip hose, in along my fence line where we're growing sunflowers, corns, and beans. And then I have done a regular polytube system with spray emitters on our first garden bed, uh, kind of an experiment to make sure I understood how it works. So those are, are, are our first two zones. Uh, two other zones that we're going to set up is going to be a, another two sets of garden beds and a drip for our pumpkins and watermelon patch and with some corn done in there as well. And then a later expansion that I'm going to do is to go over to our trees. And again, I want to do all spray uh, for everywhere I'm not doing the drip line. So let's take a look at a few of the things that we're going to end up using. Here we have a timer to set up different zones. There are a couple spikes for the spray emitters that we're going to use. I have a whole ton more of those. Those are just an example. Have some things to cut off the end of the poly tube. I have the poly tube I showed you. Have a 50 psi pressure regulator. Have some normal three quarter hose to half inch poly tube hose connector. I have some spikes to hold things down. I have some of the emitters that go into the spike. I have a tool to be able to do the work with. I have a different set of type of emitters. I have some uh, plugs in case I make a mistake. I have some quarter inch poly in case I need it. I also have a Y, some quick disconnects, and some hose ends that we're gonna all incorporate into everything. And then I have some regular hose. And that is it for about the equipment that we're gonna use. Just imagine it a lot more of it. And we'll go into why I haven't just thrown everything onto the table here in a second. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to want to design our system and figure out what we want everything to do. So as the current system exists, I have a 50 PSI pressure regulator. This will go on to the timer here, just like that. And then we will connect this to here like that. And then this will go on to the half inch poly tube, not this quarter inch stuff. So now we know that it's gonna come off of there, it's gonna go out, and then we'll take this tool, puncture it into the half inch polytube and shove this in here, and now this thing is ready to go. From there, we're gonna take one of these emitters here and we're gonna shove it into the top of there, and boom, we now have a spray system for drip. The only thing we have to do is lay out where we want that thing to go. We'll look at the distances listed here. Uh, on this case, we want four to six feet of coverage. On these particular emitters, it is 10 to 12 feet of coverage for spray. The reason we went with the 50 PSI is because that's what's recommended for the spray type. We would actually wanna go with a 25 PSI regulator if we wanna do normal drip irrigation. I didn't wanna do normal drip because uh, where stuff is planted changes and I'd rather just spray and treat it like rain at four o'clock in the morning. So a couple of changes that we have to figure out along the way. I mean, that's basically it. Like you are ready to go with just that information to do spray emitters. I, on the other hand, have a couple of interesting things to figure out. I want to go from one, I want to have a zone be two separate beds. And so I don't want to use PVC from one bed to the other and cause, a, cause an issue with uh, um, brittleness of the sun. I want to be able to use a hose. So I need to figure out how to actually connect this. I need to be able to connect those two systems of polytube. So, I have bought extra things. So what I'm gonna do is I'll run it out of here. It'll go out of here, down the line, and then it's gonna hit one of these couplers. So I'm then gonna to go to another coupler over here. Nope, it's gonna go like this. Wait, it's gonna come out of the quarter inch. It's gonna go into here. We're gonna connect our hose in here. We're gonna do a, another connection here. 
So now imagine a hose right here, and then I'm gonna connect the half inch poly tube to here. And then that's gonna go wherever. We're gonna do our emitters off of that. And then I need to be able to cut it off at the end. And that's where these things come in handy. Because you just fold the half inch poly tube, shove it through there, and you now kink to the end. And we are done. That's, that's the setup to go from one bed to another and use hose so you don't have to deal with sun degradation, UV degradation of hose line. So with that, I'm going to do two beds with this type of a connection. Um, I'm going to break off of the one that I have now and then run a whole separate one. And then I also need to do a uh, connection at the end of a bed for the hose. So with a quick, quick disconnect. So I'll have another one of these. So that means I'm going to want to put this on here like that. And then so now with the hose that I have, I'm just going to be able to connect that on. Uh, and then I can pull it off and switch it over to something else because I need to put a freeze hydrant over by the other beds uh, where this quick disconnect one is going to be. So actuality, if I'll just go ahead and do this here, this little setup is done. We will go from the hose into the 50 PSI regulator into a converter uh, down to our half inch. So we'll just shove our quarter inch there and we're good to go. So that's that for that second bed. Before I let you go, I wanted to talk on one last thing as we wrap up. I recommend um, doing all of this. There's a lot of extra pieces. I recommend actually getting some bends like this. Here I have all my extra connections for doing Co's quick disconnects. I have all the different connections for doing the drip irrigation with polytube stuff. And that way it is super easy to find. I can put it up on a shelf. I can label it. People know where it is. All I got to do is go open it up, grab the stuff that I need, close it back up and I'm ready to go. And then I have another bin. I'm using it on a different project at this exact moment, but I can throw a few things into that bin, carry it out to the project site and I'm ready to go. Definitely recommend getting some bins to stay organized. It will help immensely in trying to track things out. So we have our hose. This is actually coming from a freeze hydrant way over there. And uh, it's going into a pressure regulator to make sure that we don't ever get over 50 PSI for these spray emitters. Um, I have this set up with this hose because I want to put a, a freeze hydrant right here, but I haven't gotten to that yet. So it comes out of this pressure regulator down to this hose. If you notice, we have a emitter plugged into the side where we just punch a hole and then we can run it over to an emitter that has a spray part to it. And really, we just go on down the line and uh, we're going to go down to the end of the bed and then cut over. So at this point in the bed, I have extra hose in case that I want to do something different. I might want to go back around here or not. I don't know. But here we have again another spray emitter where we just again punch a hole, runs out to this thing, and then we put this little cap on it uh, to be able to spray out properly. Here we go through our hose system where we have a connection, we have a quick disconnect, and then it runs over to another bed. And again, we're doing the hose here so that we have UV protection. Basically all I did is I put two ends that are the same uh, ends on it and then I was able to cap this here and be able to do quick disconnect so that I can just take it off, put it back on and do whatever I need to do in case I need to move this hose for some reason. And then finally we're set up in this bed. It comes in through the hose, connects to this emitter, goes to the other end. Again, I have extra uh, that's just there so that I can do it. And then I have another spray emitter down here. This particular emitter does kind of a 180 degree here and that way. I have one on the other side as well. And then in the middle of this bed, it does like a 300 degree spray. Uh, so it gets most everything around and uh, it does a really good job. But I prefer these spray emitters because it acts like, um, like rain. Um, I feel like if I did drip, I would have to like position it in perfectly exact spots. And as you can see, everything kind of just goes everywhere. So it's not really a good thing to, to place that drip irrigation in those exact spots. So I feel like spray just works out so much better. And then finally, the last step we have is this four port beehive terminal. Uh, you can connect to it on Bluetooth with your phone. 
and be able to control and set schedules for everything here. Runs on batteries, two AA batteries. And then we have it coming out of here at a Y so that I can connect this hose to here and be able to just regularly spray. Um, as soon as I get the freeze hydrant, that's gonna go off and it'll connect to something different. Uh, the other thing I have again, pressure to go to uh, the set of spray emitters. And then this one is again, a hose that I custom cut that actually goes to a uh, drip tape line uh, all across our uh, fence line that we have uh, sunflowers growing up for chicken feed and then over to some pumpkins and watermelons uh, for human feed uh, and I guess maybe chickens too we'll see uh, but anyway that is really it that is setting up an emitter spray system into the garden we finally got this up and running it was a little expensive um, I will admit that I kind of went overboard on some of the connections and some of the other stuff um, but it is the best year that we've had so far and we're constantly and consistently watering which is something that we don't do in previous years and so i think it's worth it um, we're again we're having our best year ever as a garden and that is saying something so with that i thank you for your time for watching if you find this useful this video useful please give me a thumbs up and a subscribe if you wouldn't mind and i will see you next time in some other build have a good one